In these clips, we see fighters coming under attack from the rear. A tail warning radar system was developed to mitigate this threat. A fighter fitted with this system was 80% less likely to be shot down. The intent of this video is to review the APS-13 tail warning radar characteristics, benefits, and drawbacks, test and combat results, implementation priorities, pilot reaction, and its connection to the atomic bomb. This page from a May 1946 AAF Scientific Advisory Group document titled Radar and Communications outlines World War II radar application lessons learned. It is clear that fighters require two types of radar, forward-looking for range-finding target distances and tail warning. A fighter pilot is in a disadvantage if he cannot see in his rear blind spot, especially if he is focused on tracking an enemy aircraft. To mitigate this risk, he needs to know if an enemy aircraft is tracking him from behind. The APS S-13 tail warning radar will provide him an alert if he's being tail tracked. Many World War II pilots owe their lives to this system. This page from an October 1944 Assistant Chief of Air Staff Intelligence document titled Impact introduces the APS-13 tail warning radar. The system is now in production and to be installed on all day and night fighters. The system consists of an antenna, transmitter receiver, control box, and pilot alert light and bell. When an aircraft enters the radar zone, the pilot is alerted and can take action. The zone of coverage is shown in this image. The radar equipped P-51 is here. A tail attacking ME-109 is here. The elliptical shaped effective cone extends 800 yards aft. The cone projects 60 degrees in the horizontal and 90 degrees in the vertical. If a plane enters this zone, the Mustang's cockpit alert bell and light will be activated. This image shows the components of the system including the antenna, light indicator, and bell. The APS-13's control box is located here in the Mustang's cockpit on the right side. The hooded alarm warning light is located here next to the gun sight. This page from a 1945 Radar Observer's Bombardment Information File document outlines characteristics and usage of the APS-13 tail warning radar. The system works between altitudes of 3,100 and 50,000 feet. Ground reflection limits the lower altitude value. To use the system, turn on the power switch shaded here. Wait three minutes for the system to warm up. Test the unit's alarm with the test switch here. If the alarm functions, then adjust the alarm's brightness with the rheostat dial. The radar's distance sensitivity needs to be checked by a technician prior to mission start. This image shows the APS-13 radar system in the P-47N model from a September 1945 pilot training manual for the Thunderbolt document. The effective zone extends from 200 to 800 yards back. The tail warning switch box is located here. The tail antenna is mounted here on the Mustang, midway up the vertical stabilizer. The location of the antenna on a Thunderbolt. A close-up of the antenna array. The position of the installation reference to the rudder is stamped into the base plate. The antenna protrusions function as a reflector, radiator, and director. The warning light is hooded, so the red alarm light will not interfere with the cockpit's instrument panel, as discussed on this page from a 1946 Tactical Use of Radar Navy document. The Mustang's warning light is located here. The 800-yard coverage distance was selected since this distance is beyond the attacking fighter's effective range. There is no danger from an attack. If the attacking enemy aircraft is within this range, the fighter pilot will have sufficient time to take evasive action. Technical specifications of the APS-13 system are listed on this page from a 1944 BAC test report number 57. The system weight equates to 20 pounds. The system draws 3.5 amps from the plane's 27-volt DC electrical system. That's 95 watts of power consumption. The system was evaluated at Wingsfield in Orlando, Florida. The system was tested under simulated combat attacks. No radar system failed during the trials. More importantly, no attacking aircraft scored a hit on the radar-equipped fighter. The sweet spot maximum sensitivity range equated to 800 yards. When set at a distance of 1,000 yards, the attacking plane could still track the alerted fighter. At 600 yards, there was not enough time to take evasive action. Test pilots commented, the system lets the pilot know if the attacker has been shaken off. This reduces pilot worry by confirming the attacking plane has disengaged. If no indications, he can get back to the fight sooner. When the fighters are in formation, only the trailing plane should have their radar units on. Once the formation breaks up, all fighters can turn on their units. Recall, a three-minute warm-up is required, though. The advantages of the units are listed here. 
provides a warning of enemy aircraft on his tail, allows evasive action while the enemy aircraft is outside their effective range, removes the worry factor and unneeded evasive actions due to false indications. If the fighter is required to head back to base, he does not need to weave, he can just beeline straight to base. He can attack more aggressively, he can focus on tracking his prey in long straight dive without worry of backside attack, no tail attack distractions during tracking and strike. All pilots who took part in the trials were enthusiastic of the system's performance. It is recommended all day and night fighters be fitted with the system. 42,000 units will be ordered. RCA is a prime contractor. 22,770 units were procured in 1944 and another 10,608 in 1945, as shown on this table from a 1952 military history document titled United States Army in World War II Statistics. Additional information of the system is provided in this internal memo dated July 23, 1944. Attacks were tested from all direction. It worked without any blind spots. Maintenance was simple and easy. The system gave a pilot alert around 2,100 feet above the ground. This will aid when landing in overcast conditions. System evaluation pilots estimated 80% of air-to-air -air losses would have not occurred if the system was in operation. Experienced fighter pilots involved in the testing were unanimous in their endorsement, and it should be incorporated in all fighter aircraft, as discussed in this August 1944 8th Air Force's Fighter Command Memo. The system will aid in descending through overcast condition. The system will save lives. Recommend immediate procurement and installation of the system on all fighter aircraft. This page outlines the installation priority of the TAIL warning radar systems from a March 5, 1945 Air Technical Services Command Directorate. The columns represent the priority ranking, type of aircraft, mission type, aircraft theater group, and number of units needed. Note that the list prioritizes night fighters, then night photo reconnaissance, intruders, special, and fighters last. One reason why fighters are last in the priority list is discussed in this December 1943 8th Air Force's Service Command Memo. Photographic reconnaissance unit planes should be given tail warning radar priority since their sorties require the planes to fly alone, straight, and level during their missions, which make them more vulnerable to rear attacks. Fighter planes, on the other hand, can cover each other's tails and don't necessarily fly straight courses. They should be less vulnerable to a surprise tail attack. This page summarizes an encounter on March 19, 1945 between a tail warning radar equipped Thunderbolt from the 78th Fighter Group and an ME-109. The pilot indicated the tail radar system provided three good alerts during the engagement. This text snippet from a 2017 book titled A Manifest Spirit of the 359th Fighter Group, 1943-1945, outlines pilot observation regarding the tail warning radar system. The bell is not loud enough to clearly hear over cockpit noises. Most pilots react to the light. The unit will be triggered by rear flak projectiles or jettison of the fuel tanks. The system is triggered by any cone zone contact, friend or foe. Pilots found the system valuable when in combat or egressing back to base alone. Does this antenna on Little Boy look familiar? The APS-13 antenna were off-the-shelf altimeter sensors for starting the bomb's detonation train. Each bomb had four APS-13 sensors for redundancy. When two of the sensors agreed to an 18,000-foot altitude, the bomb's detonation sequence started. The bomber, silver plate, ECM, or Raven officer was responsible for searching for any jamming method that might disrupt the system. If you've enjoyed this APS-13 tail warning radar deep dive review and found the information provided worthy of your time, please consider supporting the channel by commenting, liking, and or subscribing to World War II U.S. Bombers.